If you're working in the field of HR analytics, one of the greatest challenges is gaining the respect of leaders outside of HR. To gain this respect, you have to establish yourself as a credible expert and demonstrate business acumen. But how do you do this? Hello, I'm Tracy Smith, the president of Numerical Insights. This video is a shortened version of a presentation originally scheduled to be given at the Human Capital Institute's HR Analytics Conference in March 2020. Since an in-person presentation wasn't possible, this video is provided to the public to view at home. If you have any questions about this presentation, feel free to use the comments section in YouTube and I'll be happy to respond to your questions. What I've seen happening in the HR analytics field is that companies have done a great job of establishing and obtaining the fundamental tools and applications required to perform analytics. These are tools such as newer HRIS systems to replace legacy systems, data visualization tools like Power BI and Tableau, and script languages like R and Python. I've seen that many companies have hired people into HR analytics roles, but the vast majority are new university graduates with little experience. I've seen another subset of hires to support the IT skill sets required to establish the overall infrastructure for HR analytics. What I rarely see, however, especially in teams that formed from new university graduates, is a demonstration of solid business acumen. Business acumen is one skill that greatly contributes to having your HR analytics efforts recognized outside of HR. So what is business acumen? For analytics gurus, it means having the experience and wisdom to see the bigger picture, to be able to evaluate the impact of a problem on multiple areas of a business, and to assess whether that problem can be solved or minimized with an analytical study, and whether there is an ROI in doing so. I'm using the phrase ROI here not to necessarily indicate that there always needs to be a financial return on analytic studies, but rather that it needs to make good business sense to proceed. Conducting analytic studies that yield no value is a waste of precious resources. For HR leaders, business acumen means having the same experience as described for analytics gurus, but they should especially understand the main drivers of success for business areas outside of HR and how to assess the financial costs and benefits of their own projects. To understand what's important to areas outside of HR, it is useful to know how a typical company is structured. Operations is the central core. This is where products are made or services to external customers are provided. Closest to the core are the teams that sell the products or services. These are your revenue generators. Outside of operations and sales are the support functions. These are the teams that provide legal expertise, manage procurement and the supply chain, generate marketing activities, perform accounting and finance activities, and support employee needs or workforce strategies. While this may not represent every company, this structure is quite typical. So what do the areas outside of HR care about? Regardless of the area, each segment of the company is trying to execute initiatives or projects. Their three main goals are similar to the three main components of project management. They care about managing the cost of current initiatives, providing quality in whatever product or service they provide, and they aim to manage the timing of execution. Let's look at a few business areas to get more specific. Inside operations, they care about providing quality products and services in a timely fashion to external clients. If they are a manufacturing operation, one of their goals is to ensure that they minimize the production of defective parts. They also have an interest in finding new ways to reduce the length of time it takes to make a part. Finally, they have an overall goal to provide a safe working environment for their employees. We've looked at the company core of operations, so let's now move one step outward from the core and look at sales. The sales team cares about the price of products in order to remain competitive in the market. They aim to service customers in a timely manner and to ensure that customers still see value in the product or service the company provides. Moving outward again in our company structure, let's see what the various support functions care about. 
A key service provided by your legal experts is the ability to assess the risks associated with providing products or services to external customers. For example, if your company sells heavy machinery, what are the risks associated with people using that equipment or being in the vicinity of that equipment? Additionally, since we live in the age of data, legal experts work to assess and minimize the risk of data breaches or unauthorized usage of company data. Company data includes customer information, product information, and employee information, just to name a few important categories. Let's move over to the supply chain and procurement teams. These areas are heavily focused on managing the cost of external parts, supplies, or services, and ensuring the quality of inbound goods. They work with suppliers and operations to ensure that inbound goods arrive on time. They may also coordinate with operations and the finance team to balance minimizing the amount of money tied up in inventory and having enough inventory to meet customer demand. Marketing is responsible for getting people interested in your products and services. They conduct market research and analysis to understand your ideal customer's interests. Marketing remains closely tied to operations to share information supporting new product development. They are also tightly linked to the sales area, providing much of the materials that the sales team uses to convey information to new and existing customers. Accounting and finance experts care about effectively managing cash flow for the entire business. Is there enough cash flow to effectively operate? Can we predict future cash flow needs in case we anticipate needing external sources of funding? Are we managing to our budget and keeping expenses in line with revenue? These experts also provide financial models to assist other areas of the company in determining the financial viability of proposed projects. Last but not least, what should HR care about? The employees, of course, but what else? HR should care about everything that other business areas care about because those business areas are HR's internal customers. Now that we know what the business areas outside of HR care about, let's learn how to effectively communicate with them. To begin, let's start with the language used by HR. HR speaks in terms of talent management, human capital, organizational behavior, culture, diversity and inclusion, and my particular favorite, competencies. The problem is, no one speaks like that outside of HR. If you're in the field of analytics, you speak in terms of regression and correlation, predictive and prescriptive analytics, R, Python, databases, data cubes, and data lakes. To you, nearest neighbor refers to a mathematical approach, not the house next to you. The problem is, very few people other than analytics colleagues speak like this. The rest of HR certainly doesn't speak like this, and only a few people in other business areas speak like this. To gain the respect of leaders outside of HR, it definitely helps to learn to speak the language spoken in those areas. For example, suppose you are an HR analyst. You want to discuss the results of an analytics project with the engineer, and you say, we ran a regression analysis on the hours of safety training versus engagement. We got an R squared of 34%, so there's a correlation. We think we should give your employees more safety training. The engineer might say, I don't understand. What was said that the engineer might not understand? Depending on their engineering role, they may be familiar with regression analysis and statistics, but they definitely don't hold conversations about engagement. You'll need to modify your language to speak in concrete, measurable terms like the number of safety incidents per year. Now suppose you speak with the head of operations. You tell that leader the following. We ran a regression analysis on the number of hours of safety training each employee has received and the number of safety incidents we've had in the last five years. We got an R squared of 34%, so there's a correlation. We think we should give your employees more safety training to see if that reduces the number of safety incidents. You've spoken in concrete, measurable terms, but this isn't what the leader wants to hear. Technical detail is okay for the engineer and speaking analyst to analyst, but at the leadership level, they're not looking for detail. They're wondering how much this matters to the business. 
Instead, consider the following sentences to say to the leader. We wanted to understand the impact of safety incidents on the business. Each incident is costing the company about $25,000. We looked at the safety records and found that there is a relationship between the number of hours of training received and the likelihood of a safety incident occurring. This year, we'd like to invest $50,000 in additional training. Our study shows that this may reduce the number of safety incidents by about four per year, which would save the company $200,000 per year. I'm happy to present the details of the analysis if you'd like to see them. This phrasing tells the leader what you did, what the result was, and what the impact of taking a certain action may be on the company. Offer to show the details of the analysis if the leader wishes to see them. They may review the details if your relationship with them is fairly new and you're still building your credibility. But you've successfully established that credibility when they no longer request the details. Now we spoke of safety, so let me provide you with some specific examples of what safety is worth in terms of dollars. On the screen, you can see that OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, levy substantial fines for safety incidents and violations. If you have employees working in factories or out in the field, the topic of safety is one example of where HR analytics can provide a strong contribution to the bottom line. While we've spoken about the number of training hours impacting the number of safety incidents, an analytics project could be set up to test many more factors to see which have the greatest impact on reducing safety incidents, thereby providing a better work environment for employees and cost savings for the company. As a final example, I wanted to show you that occasionally, analytics proves something very counterintuitive. In many large companies, high-performing employees are rotated into international assignments. It is thought that international exposure prepares these employees for higher level positions. This belief is what companies use to justify the expense of these rotations. And they are quite expensive. The analytics team in one of the companies proved the following. Attrition in the rotational roles actually increased by 12%. The odds of getting promoted from these roles decreased by 18%. Essentially, the analytics team has just proven that international rotations benefit neither the employee nor the company. Analytics provides a great opportunity for HR to earn the respect of leaders in other business areas. But to earn that respect, HR needs to speak the language of the other business areas, not the language of HR. Recognize that these business areas are HR's internal customers. And ensure that the analytics projects you choose can provide an impact to cost, quality, or timing. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore other videos on this channel or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section in YouTube and I will be happy to respond.